In this video, you will be introduced to the basics of insurance and its evolution. We live in a world of uncertainty, where unpredictable events such as floods, fire, earthquakes, sudden demise of a family member, not only cause emotional pain, but also economic loss and grief. This is where insurance comes to play, by having a system of sharing and mutual support. From the time of Babylonian traders, the traders of Baruch and Surat, Greeks, inhabitants of Rhodes to the Chinese traders, we have been practicing insurance in one way or the other to minimize the losses suffered by some members of the community. The origins of modern commercial insurance business, as practiced today, can be traced to Lloyd's Coffee House in London. Traders who used to gather there would agree to share the losses to their goods being carried by ships due to perils of the sea. Another important milestone in the insurance world was the Amicable Society for a Perpetual Assurance in London, which is considered to be the first life insurance company in the world. Modern insurance in India began in early 1800 with agencies of foreign insurers starting marine insurance business. The first life insurance company to be set up in India was an English company, Oriental Life Insurance Company Limited. The first non-life insurer to be established in India was Triton Insurance Company Limited. The first Indian insurance company, Bombay Mutual Assurance Society Limited, was formed in Mumbai in 1870. The oldest insurance company in India, National Insurance Company Limited, was formed in 1906 and is still in business. Many other Indian companies were set up subsequently as a result of the Swadeshi movement at the turn of the century. In 1912, the Life Insurance Companies Act and the Provident Fund Act were passed to regulate the insurance business. The Life Insurance Companies Act 1912 made it compulsory that premium rate tables and periodical valuation of companies be certified by an actuary. The Insurance Act 1938 was the first legislation enacted to regulate the conduct of insurance companies in India. This Act, as amended from time to time, continues to be in force. Life insurance business was nationalized on 1st September 1956 and the Life Insurance Corporation of India or LIC was formed. There were 170 companies and 75 Provident Fund Societies doing life insurance business in India at that time. From 1956 to 1999, the LIC held exclusive rights to do life insurance business in India. Nationalization of Non-Life Insurance With the enactment of General Insurance Business Nationalization Act in 1972, the non-life insurance business was also nationalized. Malhotra Committee and IRDAI In 1993, the Malhotra Committee was set up to explore and recommend changes for development of the industry, including the reintroduction of an element of competition. In 1997, the Insurance Regulatory Authority was established. The passing of the Insurance Regulatory and Development Act 1999 led to the formation of Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India in April 2000 as a statutory regulatory body both for life, non-life and health insurance industry. IRDA has been subsequently renamed as IRDAI in 2014. Now that you have learnt about the evolution of insurance in India, let's take a look at the present life insurance industry. Currently, there are 24 life insurance companies operating in India. Life Insurance Corporation of India is a public sector company, while there are 23 other life insurance companies in the private sector. The Postal Department, under the Government of India, also transacts life insurance business via postal life insurance, but is exempt from the purview of the regulator. Thank you. In the second video of the lesson, Introduction to Insurance, you will learn how the concept of insurance works. Insurance is considered as a process by which the losses of a few 
who are unfortunate to suffer such losses are shared amongst those exposed to similar uncertain events or situations. The insurance arrangement involves several entities which includes the assets, risk, pooling, insurer, contract and the insured. We will learn about these entities in detail as we move forward. Let's begin with asset. Asset is anything which has an economic value. It may be physical, such as a car or a building, or non-physical, such as name and goodwill, or personal, such as one's eyes, limbs, and other aspects of one's body. The asset may lose its value if a certain event happens. This chance of loss is called risk, and the cause of the risk event is known as peril. The next important principle in insurance is pooling. This consists of collecting numerous individual contributions, known as premiums, from various people. People with similar assets are exposed to similar risks. This process of pooling funds and compensating the unlucky few is carried out through an institution known as the insurer. The insurer enters into an insurance contract with each person who seeks to participate in the scheme. Such a participant is known as the insured. Burden of risk refers to the costs, losses and disabilities one has to bear as a result of being exposed to a given loss situation or event. The burden can be categorized as primary and secondary burden. In case of a primary burden, the losses are suffered by households and business units as a result of pure risk events. These losses are often direct and measurable and can be easily compensated for by insurance. For example, fire in a factory and loss of goods. These losses can be estimated and are tangible. Secondary burden consists of costs and strains that one has to bear merely from the fact that one is exposed to a loss situation. Even if the said event does not occur, these burdens are still to be borne. For example, physical and mental strain caused by fear and anxiety. Thank you. In this video of the lesson, Introduction to Insurance, you will learn about insurance as a tool for managing risk and the role of insurance in society. When we speak about a risk, we are not referring to a loss that has actually been suffered, but a loss that is likely to occur. It is thus an expected loss. The cost of this expected loss is the product of two factors, probability and impact. Risk increases in direct proportion with both probability and the amount of loss. And if the amount of loss is very high and the probability of its occurrence is small, the cost of the risk would be low. When deciding whether to insure or not, there are certain number of factors that one should consider. Firstly, don't risk a lot for a little. There should be a reasonable relationship between the cost of transferring the risk and the value derived. For example, we cannot insure an ordinary ball pen. Secondly, don't risk more than you can afford to lose. The loss as a result of an event is so huge that the retention of risk does not appear realistic. For example, if an oil refinery of a company gets destroyed, the company cannot afford to bear the loss. And lastly, consider the likely outcomes of the risk carefully. It is best to ensure those assets for which the probability of occurrence of a loss is low, but the possible impact is high. For example, insuring a space satellite. Insurance companies play an important role in a company's economic development. They are contributing in a significant sense to ensure that the wealth of the country is protected and preserved. Some of their contributions are Their investments benefit the society at large. The funds they collect are held for the benefit of the policyholders. Insurance protects the capital in industry and releases the capital for further expansion and development of business. It encourages free investment of capital in business enterprises and promotes efficient use of existing resources. A bank may not advance loans on property unless it is insured against loss or damage by insurable perils. 
And finally, insurance operations earn foreign exchange and represent invisible exports. It is now recognized that provision of social security is an obligation of the state as well as the central government. Here are some acts and schemes passed by the government in this regard. Employee State Insurance Corporation under the Employee State Insurance Act 1948 pays for the expenses of sickness, disablement, maternity and death for the benefit of industrial employees and their families. Several schemes such as Rashtriya Krishi Bima Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bima Yojana, Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bima Yojana and Rashtriya Swastha Bima Yojana have been sponsored by the government. All the rural insurance schemes operated on a commercial basis are designed ultimately to provide social security to the rural families. Apart from this support to government schemes, the insurance industry itself offers on a commercial basis insurance covers which have the ultimate objective of social security. For example, Janata Personal Accident, Janarogya, etc. Thank you.